Hey guys, so for chapter 11, we are learning about the formation of solids. I'm not sure if you have learned this in school, but I promise this is very short and easy chapters. Since we only have two subtopics, which is the first one is stress and strain, and then another one is Young's modulus. That's it. So 11.1 .1 stress and strain. Basically, in this subtopic, we are discussing about the graph of stress strain and then the graph of force elongation for brittle and ductile material. Also, we are discussing about the differences between elastic and plastic deformations. Stress, or the Greek alphabet C, sigma, is defined as the ratio of the perpendicular force to the cross-sectional area E. Well, imagine that we have a long road initially with a uniform cross-sectional area E and the ordinate length L node when we stretch them uh, from both sides with the equal magnitude but in opposite direction the road or the wire will extend by amount of E so E here we mean extension so mathematically stress sigma is equal to force over area so if you wonder what this symbol is this means the perpendicular force acted to the cross-sectional area E so the force need to be, be perpendicular with the normal of area stress is a scalar quantity because we only take the magnitude of force we don't care about the direction of force and then the magnitude of area so we know that force have units newton and then area unit is meter so mathematically it will be a newton meter negative 2 strain or epsilon is defined as the ratio of the extension or elongation e to the original length l node mathematically strain epsilon is equal to e over l node which is extension is the length after the root is extended or compressed minus the original length over original length strain is a scalar quantity without unit because we know that extension have a unit of meter and then the original length also have a unit of meter so meter over meter will be one so there is no unit for strain elastic deformations occur when an object or a material returns to its original length or size after being distorted it behaves within the elastic limits that means when we stretch or compress a material it will return to its original position that was elastic deformation behavior while well, plastic deformations occur when a material is deformed beyond its elastic limits. When we undergo this plastic deformation, it cannot be returned to its original position. And then we have two types of materials. The first one is ductile and brittle. So ductile materials is the materials that undergo plastic deformation before breaking, such as steel, copper and aluminium. Meanwhile, for brittle materials, it doesn't show the plastic behavior or deformation, such as glass. So, if you want to make it easier to remember or to understand, let's imagine that the ductile material is metal or anything that can be written to its original position. Meanwhile, brittle material is, let's say, glass, one of the examples. For force extension and stress strain graphs for ductile materials, so if you can see here, the force extension on my left and stress strain on my right have exactly the same pattern, the same form graph, where both undergo elastic deformation and plastic deformation. And you can see that we have several points. We have point O, A, B, C, D, and E. So what these points tell you? Okay, for point E, right, let's start with O. O is the original uh, form. Okay, point O is the proportionality limit 
OA line shows that the material obeys Hooke's law. We learn about Hooke's law in school or even in chapter 5 where Hooke's law states that force is directly proportional to the extension. So F is directly proportional to E. As long as it is in the line OA, when even the force is removed, the wire will return to its original position. Point B, elastic limit. When the force is removed, the material will return to its original position. But beyond this point, the material will never return to its original position. It was permanently stretched. Point C is yield point. This is point where the plastic deformation start. The internal structure of the material starts to change because the plane of atoms slides across each other. And when the force increases, the extension increases rapidly. So we can see that in this line, C to D, the extension increases rapidly as the force increases. And next one is point D, breaking stress point. Uh, this is point where the stress is maximum. After this point, the materials thins and thins, thins and necks are formed. And last one is point E, the breaking point. This is the point where the material breaks a fracture. So this is the example stress strain graph for various materials. So we have still glass, copper and aluminium. So we have discussed before that still copper and aluminium is a ductile material and glass is the brittle material. So ductile materials is undergo both elastic and plastic deformation while glass is only undergoing elastic deformation. So up to this point, it breaks already. Well, that's it for 11.1. So 11.2, Young's modulus. We are discussing about Young's modulus and also we are discussing about strain energy and strain energy per unit volume. Well, what is Young modulus? Young modulus symbols is Y is defined as the ratio of the tensile stress to the tensile strain if the proportionality limit has not been exceeded. Or mathematically, Y is equal to stress of a strain and we learned before that stress is force of area and strain is extension of original length. So mathematically, when we rearrange them together, you will get this equation. So do your maths. This is also a scalar quantity because we know that stress is scalar, strain is scalar. So the Young modulus is a scalar quantity. We don't need to know the direction of the force. Yeah? And the unit for Young modulus is Pascal. Young's modulus does not depend on the length of the wire, but it only depends on the material made the wire. It doesn't change if the length of the wire is increased or decreases. So this is the uh, example for the value of various materials, Young modulus. So we have, if you can see here, it shows the difference value for aluminium, copper, steel, nylon and glass. So you don't have to memorize this, they will give you in the questions or they ask you to find it. They give the several values to calculate. So you don't have to memorize this, you just need to know that the various material has different young modulus. And don't forget that you can see here the unit here stated that is gigapascal. So this is a prefix. This is not the final unit for young modulus. The unit for young, mo young modulus is pascal. So when we have prefix, you know what to do. Yeah, you need to times by 10 to the power of giga is 12. So be careful. Next, strain energy. Well, when a wire is stretched by a load of force, work is done on the wire and strain energy is stored within. Strain energy in this case is the elastic potential energy. Okay, we have learned elastic potential energy in chapter 5. Okay, consider the force extension graph of this wire until the proportionality limit as shown in figure below. So when we have force extension graph, the area under the graph is the strain energy. 
Meanwhile, the strain and energy per unit volume is the area under the graph for stress and strain. Okay, I repeat again for strain energy is area under the graph of Fe graph. Meanwhile, strain energy per unit volume is area under the stress and strain graph. Make sure you can distinguish them both. Well, that's it for 11.2. Right, so let's move on to the questions. The first one, the energy stored in a stretch wire depends on So the answer is T. Next, figure below shows stress strain curves for four material P, Q, R and S. Which material is least strong? That means it has the least young modulus. Obviously, it was T. S. Which of the following statement is not true about the properties of a stretched metal wire? Answer is D again. The stress developed in a material at breaking point in extension is called it's breaking stress. The, elasti the elasticity of various materials is controlled by its. Stress at elastic limit. What is the stress strain curve? It is the relationship between stress and strain. Last but not least, there are various limits associated with the strain under stress, namely the limit of proportionality, the elastic limit, and the yield point. Which of the following? statement is false. It was the Well, basically that's it for chapter 11. Thank you for listening guys. So see you in the next chapter. Chapter 12, heat conduction and thermal expansion. See you again.